So welcome everyone to our third and last day of uh, the Cyber Physical Assistance Summer School. Uh, for some of you who are new today, my name is Mohamed Musavi, and together with Mehdi Kargahi and Walid Taha, we have been co-chairing the summer school, scientific co-chairs of the summer school. Today we have a very exciting program, just like yesterday and the day before. I, I believe we have had a very uh, fascinating program throughout. Uh, probably we kept the best for the last. I don't know. That, that's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's difficult to say. I mean, all speakers have been excellent. I, I personally enjoyed it thoroughly. I, I hope you did also. Anyway, so it's my absolute pleasure to introduce uh, the speaker of this morning, Professor Pitu Mirchandani. Uh, Pitu got his uh, bachelor and master's from UCLA in engineering control and his doctorate in operation research from MIT. Uh, he currently holds the AVNET chair for supply chain networks at uh, Arizona State University, one of the biggest uh, establishment universities in the US. Uh, he uh, leads a huge team of, uh, interdisciplinary team of, of uh, scientific, scientific staff working on different aspects of cyber physical systems. He has over 40 years of experience in dynamic stochastic networks. Uh, I, I should tell an anecdote here. So I, I met him in Germany uh, in a seminar and it felt as if everyone in that seminar was Pitu's student. And they were at least treating him as, as their, their supervisor. <laughs> uh, his interests are in traffic uh, flows in transport networks. In particular, he's interested in location uh, decision making, in travel and vehicle routing, in real-time data-driven decision systems, and in theory of operation research modeling. He has authored four books and over uh, co-authored and authored over 200 uh, scientific papers. He's a lifetime member of IEEE, uh, he is a chartered member of ITS, and he's a fellow of INFORMS, which is the Operations uh, Research uh, Society. I can uh, sing uh, his song of praise for, for the whole hour. Probably I will exhaust uh, the whole uh, talk if I want to go on, and I will probably not exhaust his list of honors. So without further ado, it's uh, my pleasure to give the floor to Professor Michandani. Please join me in welcoming. Um, thank you, Mohammed, and thank you for the organizers for bringing me here. And uh, thank Mary Ann, she did all the work. You, get, you did the invitation, she did the work. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad to be here. This is an ongoing research project that I have, and uh, it's supported by National Science Foundation, which has a large cyber physical program. And I was glad to get it. And I want to put, uh, make the uh, point of the team. Uh, Dishang Huang is in computer science. He does uh, cybersecurity and cloud computing. Boshan Li is computer science. He does image processing. Ya Feng Yin is in civil engineering at the University of Florida. And he's in. Uh, I would say pricing and civil engineering. And Susan Zhu is a member of our faculty in civil engineering. You notice all of them are Chinese. We can't do without the Chinese scientists in the US. OK. Uh, but the students are from all over. Uh, you see the Chinese students, they got two Indian students, two Turkish students, you know. Uh, and well, three or four Chinese students. But you notice one thing that uh, no Anglo-Saxon names there. So we are missing that because what happens, you don't have as many engineers who are going into, uh, uh, the US engineers who are going in here. So we have to get people from outside. And we are so glad we are doing that because otherwise we will be far behind China and all those places. OK, so uh, on the web, uh, Berkeley and some other, uh, uh, other groups have come up with this nice, interesting cyber physical diagram. And all the things that we were talking about yesterday are in here. You know, there's feedback systems, there's cybersecurity, there's improved design tools. So the talks that were given yesterday were somewhere in here. And here are the domains. 
there's communication, consumer, energy, infrastructure, healthcare. You know. So what happens is if you could work in this area and do some interesting uh, theoretical research as long as it's been driven by some cyber physical system. And what we are doing now is actually this part here, we have a feedback system, human in the loop, uh, networked and distributed, adaptive and predictive intelligence. So all these things, these buzzwords are in my talk, okay? And I'm talking about here, transportation. Okay, so that's my domain area. And I'm also talking about computation because computation plays a very big role. Because I'm, going to, I'm going to solve these large problems in real time. Okay, so this is a three-part talk. I realize that not all of you are transportation. So I'm going to give you about half an hour talk on what traffic, tra trans traffic management, at least in US and uh, some other countries is. And then I'm go gonna talk about some image processing that I call the PICT device. You know, we're developing a PICT device, which is sort of a sensor, a new type of sensor. And then I will talk about proactive traffic management, second part, of the last part of the talk, which has some new predictive analytics, new image processing, new data structures, cloud computing, and so on. Okay, so, so bear with me while I give you the background. And the background is basically uh, traffic adaptive signal control, past and present. And this is, a, you know, for the last 25 years, I've been looking at some of these problems. And I'll describe adaptive signal control. I'll describe the past, the present, and I'm particularly going to talk about roads. It's a system that I built. And MIDAS, a new system, is an enhancement of roads. And actually, I had roads running in the field for about 25 cities in US. Okay, so what's an adaptive control system? It's a necessary a feedback system that adapts, okay? So the, it looks at the actual system, the noise is in the actual system, there's some control system here, so it's a feedback system. And I'll bring this diagram again and again in terms of traffic control. So here's traffic control. These are your traffic lights, and you're going, you know, these are your detectors on the, on the, in the pavement, and basically you look at these detectors and the signal status, and you come up with a model here, and then uh, you come up with some type of thing which I'm gonna describe later as roads and feedbacks. So each time you observe vehicles, you have a different control over here. So, Let's go back to history. The history is we didn't have traffic lights, okay? We had a stop sign. And uh, people would stop at the stop sign and go, there's one main road here. And then after a while, it got too much, so we needed to bring in traffic lights, okay? But before the traffic lights, he had a, a cop, a traffic cop. And what he did was he allocated movement for conflicting traffic. So he gives movement here, and then he gives movement here. Okay, so he was the controller in the loop. So he observes the traffic, and he's a controller which gives different green, green time. Okay, but it, he, it got too much. There's too much traffic here. And you saw, yesterday, we, you know, we were driving in the car, there was so much traffic, a cop cannot do anything about it. Even the traffic light can't Well, this traffic light can, but, uh, so then came the traffic light, and we have a traffic controller, which sort of just selects these lights, you know, how much time to give red, how much time to give green, okay? And what we do is, we would have a traffic engineer study, figure out what the demand is, and we have the traffic signal controlling that demand. The problem is, you only, t it's too long, it takes too long to f measure the demand, so they, make it stationary demand, which is not true. And the type of things they do, and this is a two-phase controller, north, south, east, west. 
This is a three-phase controller, north, south, east phase, and left turners. This is a four-phase controller. You can five-phase, six-phase, seven-phase controllers. So they decide these controllers. By the way, please ask questions, okay? And if, if it's, it's, this is simple stuff, but still, if you're not a traffic engineer, you may say, oh, you know, what is this? So they decide on how much time to have to these, these phases. Particularly, they talk about a phase plan. So this is time, the intersection one, intersection two. Typically, a car would go through this green light, it will go through this green light. If a car stops here, it stops here, then goes through the green light, okay? So this is basically the signals at intersection one, this is signals at intersection two. This I'm only showing you one direction right now. Well, what traffic engineers did was, they said, okay, this is your cycle time. We keep a fixed cycle time. These are your splits between the cycle time, how much green and red is your split. And this is the offset. Intersection one, intersection, how much time it takes. And this depends on the speed of the cars. One problem here, the speed of the cars depends on the traffic flow. So when you put phase plan, you forget about that. Big mistake. But traffic engineer, it took me a long time to try to convince them that you really, depending on the traffic flow, this should be moving this way or this way. Okay? A, fixed, a phase plan fixes these things. These are parameters, this is CSO. Those are very important parameters for traffic engineers. So what traffic engineers do now is collect some data and download this to a traffic controller which sets the traffic signals, okay? Nothing to do with cyber physical, but you can start seeing that I need some cyber here, okay? And I don't have sensors here, so let's put some, we'll put some sensors. So here are two intersections. Now I'm going to put a phase plan for the intersections. And we have certain, you know, these are things which appear in the literature. This is a simulation program. This is an optimization program, optimization program, optimization program. You can get these programs and optimize them. For a given traffic stream, yeah, so there are no detectors there. So what it'll do is, we'll put some detectors. Okay, these are called stop bar detectors. A loop, when you go with a loop, you get an impulse, and that says the car just arrived there. If it's on top of the loop, you, get, you call them presence detectors, and this is a passage detector. When you go over this loop, you get a different type of signal, but you can easily do that, okay? And you buy these, and you fix them, and so on. These are called inductive loop detectors. Okay, you've got other detectors now, so we're getting into the, uh, into the present. We have video detectors, sonar detectors, radar detectors, we've got cell phones, we've got travel probes, we've got a whole bunch of, on the roadside beacons, we, got, we can have Bluetooth on the side to figure out where the car is carrying Bluetooth signals. So we've got a whole bunch of detectors, but they're really very simple detectors, okay? They're only measuring points. Okay, there is a car here, that's all it measures. So, there's something called actuated control, where you have a, two cars, and it's basically a, a, a queuing system. Cars come here, if there are no other cars, you actuate it and you get the green light. This is fine on a first come, first serve facing if there are not too many cars. Okay, it's a simple queuing system. Car is a customer, the traffic light is, a, is your server. Semi-actuated control means that there's more traffic going this way and less traffic going this way. So we will give them more traffic. We let them go. And then if there is a car here, it will actuate a signal. And after a while, you get some green light here for the car to go. The car may go straight, may take a left turn, or may take a right turn. OK, it's simple. OK, so now you are starting to use sensors in, ter in terms of prediction a little, just to say that, hey, there is a, you know, 
So you're estimating there is some cars here. OK. So in the 70s, you have, we haven't done too much more. In the 70s, Federal Highway, US, DO, US Department of Transportation, came up with something called Urban Traffic Control System. And effectively, it did was measured something and reapplied transit. Transit is an optimization program. So every three, four minutes, no, actually, maybe every five minutes, second, they monitor traffic volume and applied it. Okay. The main problem was to do this optimization took a long time. Okay, this is not, it was not a simple optimization. So it took a long time, there was, and there was communication. So now you notice computer and communication are becoming our bottlenecks here to make a good system work. Okay, so Scoot also, this is in UK, came up with, and by the way, Scoot is all over the place. You get it in China, you get it in, in uh, Hong Kong, you get it in Singapore and also. Uh, so they tried it, limited success as far as I'm concerned. So what it does, it, it also uses an optimization program, also has these simple detectors, and tries to come up with a plan every few seconds, every few minutes. Okay, so it works. It's not bad. Sydney SCATS came up in also around the 70s, and it's in Australia. And a control person came over here and said, no, this is really a control system. All you have to do is there's a saturation level, and you have to make sure that all the saturation levels are balanced. So it's a feedback control system, balancing saturation levels at intersections. So, so the degree of saturation is measured at each intersection. You increase the cycle time or decrease the cycle time as a feedback, just a little one. So it's like a feedback control system. But it doesn't allow for, so you can, you can see it does some tricks here, but really doesn't allow for too much coordination. That means cars can get stuck at every traffic light. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So the, what, what I'm wondering is what are the properties that this control system satisfies? Is it stability? What was that? Okay, so several things. If you, if you ask the traffic engineers circa 1970s and 1980s, they wanted to minimize stops. Okay, minimize, on the main street, you want to minimize traffic. Yes, that's called coordination. Okay, you want to minimize stops. Accumulated average stops? No. You want, to, you want the car to go as much as um, long, long distance as possible. Because stop means you're getting more pollution. They want to minimize delays. Those are queuing delays. And they, want to, they talked about something called stability. And they said if you don't have a phase plan, then you're not, not, not stable. And that's all they said. I said, can you prove it to me? So yeah, no, we can prove it to you. Prove it to me. So it turns out it's a fake. It's not nothing to do with stability. They said stability because I'll show you later what we did with roads. Okay, so, so this works. You can get scats in US. You, you're, a, you're a city and you say, I want scats, you can get scats there. I want scoots, you can get scoots there. There's one other, OPEC. Uh, this was, Gardner came to MIT and developed this, this thing. And the idea was to give green light to, to cars that you observe. So now he started looking at the, observe the cars that are coming to the intersection, okay? And so what he does is, he has some upstream detectors to measure the load that's coming in, and for various horizons, decides what to do. The problem was his optimization was really an enumeration. Let's try everything. But it, it was a dynamic program, but he saw, didn't solve the dynamic program as a dynamic program. He solved it as a as an enumeration. Okay. So again, coordination was not as good. So here I came over, and Gardner knows that I, I borrowed from him. I, you know, he knows I say he was inspired this work, and uh, so it was Gardner and John Little. John Little is optim operation research guy, well-known guy. So I talk about roads 
which I tried. One thing you notice here, we moved away from plants and we just concentrated on green light. Well, green lights is what you know, gives you, uh, minimizes stops and what, and decreases delays. So we just concentrate on green light. So we no longer use cycles, we use plans. Uh, we use green durations. Okay, so let's talk about traffic adaptive system back again. And I'm going to build, put in roads here. So the general idea is this is a real, real world traffic system. You're going to get the state of the traffic system, XT, speeds, queues, air quality, whatever you want, okay? You've got inputs here, which could be weather, for example. Okay, could be demand is an input. The control decisions are your green times, and you can think of green times at each intersection, each phase as a green time. Sensors are measuring the state, but they don't exactly give you state, they give you some YT. So if those of you are in controls, you know this is usually your notation for measurements, and this is your notation for state. This is your notation for control. So it's really a control system diagram, okay? So we have an estimator, and if you, the closest you can think about is Kalman filtering if you want. Okay, you, got a, you have a model, and you estimate, so you need a model here to estimate. And you can also use the same model to predict what's happening a little, okay? So then you estimate your XT, and then you, here you have an optimization model, okay? Again, you need a model. These models could be the same models, but here you're trying to optimize controls. Here you're trying to estimate X. So you are used to this. All the control theorists should be used to this diagram. Okay, now I'm going to put rows into that diagram. Okay, so that's real-time estimator predictor, that's real-time control decision making. The weakest link for rows was this, and I will show you later why, because we didn't quite predict well. We did okay job. So the simplified architecture for rows is, you get raw data, and you get your detector data, you get your traffic signals, what's the phase of these, and you get some communication delays here. You collect the data, you predict queues and arrivals at each intersection in a network. You, you have your control decision. Control decisions are just phase duration. How much green time for each phase that you're going to pick. So if you've got four phase, so you've got four, four control decisions there. If you've got two intersections, eight. If you've got 100 intersections, so X, the XT could be quite a big uh, variable, uh, a vector. Okay, so here's a bigger diagram. So I said, in order to solve that problem, because it got rapidly too large, I had to break it down, decompose the problem. So decompose the problem at the intersection level. Okay, so I call that intersection feedback. Just concentrate on the phases of the intersection. And then I go to, and where each car is sort of needed. I'm following each car and deciding how much green time I should give. Then we have network level feedback. And now I'm grouping the cars into platoons. And I'm doing the same type of thing, but at a network level. And then I also have this one, but I'll talk about it a little later, okay? So now I've got these detectors, and I'm gonna use this raw data to figure out what the travel times are, what the turn ratios are, well, how, much, how many go straight through, how many turn left, and how many turn right, and discharge rate. Because another thing traffic engineers didn't realize is we are really serving humans, they're serving drivers, okay? Iranian drivers are so much more aggressive than American drivers, okay? And so they have a different discharge rate. They have a different travel time. Discharge rate is how fast they leave the intersection. They leave the intersection. Okay, that means also how close they've traveled too. Okay. And so they are different. So why not measure them? Okay, where I live, we get mostly retired people coming there. 
is costed, you know, they drive very slowly, so the discharge rate is very slow. So it really should be measuring human who are using the system. So the human in the loop is so important here. Okay, so predict, so you get arrival in queues, then what you do is you come up with a control algorithm. Okay, and I'll discuss this more when I talk about my third part of my lecture, but the control algorithm, just to give you a preview, are nothing, are nothing more than Capri, is categorized arrivals phase re optimization. I'm getting new optimization. It's an efficient DP formulation. This is where I was able to beat Gardner because our DP, form, DP formulation is a little more efficient, a lot more efficient. So what we do is basically for a given phase order, A, B, C, D, these are the phases, not cycle time. How much time should I give A? How much time should I give B? How much time should I give C? And so on. And I can also in those arrivals, I can think about buses that's categorized that I can think about buses, I can think about trucks, and so on. So I'm really looking at each, each individual car, or bus, or a truck, and giving them a green time. And my controls are only A, B, C, D, E, S. So the way we do this, we look at the horizon, and our horizon may be about one minute, and for every second we update the phase. Yeah. All the variables are discrete. No continuous time here. Although, you can say, this is a continuous time horizon. But we are doing everything, we are breaking it down to seconds. And the traffic engineers say, why, do you need, why are you doing seconds? Why don't you do it minutes? I said, that's, in a minute, I can go half a mile away. You know, it's too slow. Seconds, so then we also went to half a second and so on. But we are just, we have to discretize it if we're going to solve this problem. Here. Uh, shouldn't we call the traffic management system? Sorry, it's not, it's a cyber physical system. Not yet. But it needs, it has got uh, uh, obviously another dimension, which is the social. Yeah, it, it's not yet. So that's the third part of the talk. This is only the background. Okay. okay. So, the, this. Fine. It's, it's a, because I think we really need to. We are, we are, it's a service system. And transportation is a service system for the society. And so, the, our, our users are, are users. Are you traffic drivers, uh, vehicle drivers? No, we, I'm not ignoring. So, so here's, uh, we have a higher control system here. This is at the intersection level. Okay, then you have it at the uh, level of the, of the sub-network, okay? And I have, you know, names here which says what type of algorithm I used. And actually all this was developed by an Italian visitor who was visiting me for a year. Okay, so how do you analyze the system? Okay, one anal analysis is from the idea of Newell's, Gordon Newell's idea was to think of cars coming into an intersection, which I already told you, where the server is a, is a traffic light. And this is, you can only do idealized, you can only think about poison arrivals or Erlang arrivals or gamma arrivals and so on. But really, real life is not like that, okay? Or you can do simulations based on evaluation. So we had done both. And uh, I have papers written in all these areas. So just to tell you, this, this is a single server model where the car is going north-south. I haven't shown you. I'm just saying this is a server here servicing north-south cars and east-west cars. And if you've got more, uh, more of these, you give more green time to this. If you've got more of them, you give more green time to this. Very simple concept. Okay. And it's an approximation, and you can analyze this. Okay, so you can analyze it. It's a nice. So you can get some nice theoretical results as a queuing theorist. Someone want to know some basic research? Here's some basic research. How do you analyze these queuing systems? Okay. And this is a simulation. This is this is performed long time ago by a third party because 
Federal Highway, USDOT says, listen, we have this system, roads that's running around. How good is it? Well, it says that if you offer a load and, and the throughput should be the same. You, you don't want the whole cars there, okay? So this should really be at 45 degrees. And if you notice, uh, roads is at a, roads at 45, the best available traffic control system or semi-actuated control, we do better than that. At, at low lows, it's the same thing, but at high lows, we actually get more cars through the system. Okay, so that means there are cars queuing up here, a lot more cars queuing up here. And we can do that as also looking at delays, that's delays, and so this, uh, th this is roads, and this is semi-actuated control. So we did much better, okay. So did you discuss online simulation, or is it offline? This is offline. This is evaluation. So does it match the problem that you discussed? Yeah. You know, this is, this is evaluation. These, these are simulated, and using our, our algorithm in the loop. Okay, so this is simulation evaluation. Now, how did it perform in the field? We also have that, but I didn't bring that here. Okay. So in the near future, we'll have special, you know, emergency vehicles, transit vehicles, hazard, we'll have special transponders say, I'm coming, give me extra green time. I'm a bus, give me extra green time. I'm a full bus or an empty bus will give you a different green time, okay? So roads can't do this. Again, there's papers in this showing that we have done this. Uh, in the far, far future, every vehicle will be tracked. Now, this is something which, when I first presented it, they just laughed at me, okay? But now they're starting to listen to it, and I'll show you how, okay? So the signals will provide in-vehicle control. In the vehicle, you'll have controls, what the green light is in front of you. So because you know now, the vehicle will know all the green lights everywhere in the city, okay? And, and it will also give you some information, stop or not. And then you yeah, heard about connected vehicles, that basically now your vehicle is connected to the infrastructure, which is giving you information, okay? And this is the last slide of the first, It'll improve traffic performance. It clearly interferes with buses, emergency services, rail. You can show that. Because, no, because each of them will have their own transponder giving information. That's a sensor. And we will do this, and I'll show you why this became a cyber physical system. From a, from a system which, was, which had little, little holes here, and the biggest hole was that prediction, and the other big hole was sensors were not enough. So I'm going to talk about this in, in part three, and now I'm going to talk about part two. Okay. May I? Sure, sure. I'm changing this while you ask me questions. So, so uh, you mentioned you have a cybersecurity guy here. Yeah. Okay, so very good point. So the way we are communicating now is internet protocol. Okay, uh, intersection pro communicates with the center using internet now. Okay, so he showed us that I can break into that internet. Okay, and I can give you uh, a green light. First of, all, first of all, you can't put conflict in because there's fail safe mechanism in the controller. But I can, I can mess up the traffic. Okay, so that, that's why the cyber security thing. So we, we, have, we have been able to sort of mitigate that. Okay, so that's why the cyber security part is there. There's a lot of part, there are lots of holes in this, in this cyber physical systems. And we're slowly you know, trying to cover those holes up. About privacy, has something to do? Privacy is a fake. And let's discuss that later. Okay. Security is not. So yeah. Uh, and while he's, the, why is it, you know, so, you know, in US, we have Google. 
a lot of people use Google navigation system. They can turn it off. Very few people turn it off. So they're not worried about their privacy. They're not worried about where they go. So this is exactly the system. Okay, I'm going to track you. If you want, you can turn it off. But a lot of people don't. So it's, it's, a, it's a thing, you know, I don't want Big Brother watching me. And of course, in US, we do watch. And I'm sure you watch in Iran, too. You probably watch better than we, we watch in US. And so. You know, it's so funny. I'm trying to get into my uh, email in, in US. So I can get into other email systems. You know, my AOL, I have AOL. Yeah, I can get in there. And so, but if I want to get into my uh, ASU, I get a response saying, it looks like you're, you're trying to connect from a, from a country you cannot connect. So they are watching me. <laughs> I can say that on TV, right? <laughs> Which is true. And I'm not saying anything against Iran. I'm saying something against what the US says. Yeah. I do. I do. And I'm going to talk a little more. Remember, I talked about prediction? I'm going to talk a little more about that. OK. The delay is becomes smaller and smaller depending on your, you know, if you're using fiber optics the delay is minimal. If you're using internet, oh, computation. I'll talk about that for sure. Yeah, yeah, no, third part, third part, okay. So this is back to the diagram, you know, and I wanted to mention that, you know, you have somewhere here sensors, and I'm gonna talk about sensors now. So. How did I get, as I told yesterday, that I came into CPS in the back door. I was working on traffic controls. I was working on network optimization. I was working on uh, op other optimization. And I also was working on remote sensing. OK, the remote sensing was that there was traffic flows, some media, whatever you want to use. And I, it could be video camera, radars, LIDAR, all of these things you can measure. And we, our team concentrated on just videos. We are going to take pictures of cars on the road, OK? And to try to measure the traffic variables, the traffic variables are travel times, delays, queues, those types of things. OK, so what happened was when you put detectors on the road, they are point detectors. In other words, they are called Eulerian detectors. Whereas with the video, you can actually follow the car. So those are spatial detectors, you know, where you get a trajectory. And they're called Lagrangian detectors, OK? So how can we do this? We also looked at, we could get a camera from airplanes. We can get a camera from drones. We can get a camera from helicopters, OK? This is done several years ago. Okay. So I want to show you, this is what we did. We rented a helicopter, put our little camera there, okay? A simple camera, $1,000 camera, because we needed resolution. And we got the sen you know, got these remote sensors. We did some image acquisition, image processing, and some pattern recognition to see where the cars are, okay? And, uh, okay, the feedback. So objective was, let's look at first streets and intersection, that's where I was building roads, right? And uh, we look at vehicle density, speeds, queues, platoon size. I needed this for my algorithms. So algorithms, where's the person? Algorithms drove the research. Because I really needed this, so that's why I wanted to do the research. For each of these, you, you can think there were master's students or PhD students working on, on the algorithms, okay? So with the, with the video, you can get full intersection view. You can get individual vehicle tracking. You can get data from, on many other characteristics of the road. You can get arrival patterns and all that. So this is the stuff I really needed, OK? But I don't need, I'm not going to use cameras like that anymore because you'll see some other device. So here's a, 
I hope it works now. Okay, this is taken from a helicopter. What do you notice? Jittery. You know, it's hard to, you know, it says jittering, right? Uh, and the cars are moving and so on. I want to do something about it and, and do automatic image processing here. There are certain things which are stationary here, okay? This building is stationary. This is in Arizona, University of Arizona. This building is stationary. So why don't we do the image processing to keep those buildings stationary, okay? So effectively, Oh, this is also another arterial movement, okay? So let, let me see. It's skipping over. Okay, so this is what we can get. Now, one, one big contribution here was, in order to get this information, which I'm gonna show you what it is, we had several traffic engineers working together. One person here, one person there, one person there, to be able to track, track these trajectories. So this is one car, this is another car, this is intersection one, this is intersection two, and you can see what's happened. They come over, the, there's a red light, there's a queue here, you can know the headways, distance headways, and time headways. You can find everything about it with one uh, three minutes video from up, you know. So at first, we were able to save money for the agencies instead of getting lots of traffic engineers to go and collect data, just send a helicopter. But ex helicopters are expensive. Okay, so issue one automating offline analysis. One was the moving platform, jittery of image. And what we did was we registered these frames so that they are really looking from the same point of view. And then you get a smooth point of view, which I hope you'll see it. Once we get the smooth coverage, we can track individual vehicles and we can get those trajectories, okay? And you can get lane changing behavior, you can get a whole bunch of things which traffic engineers and planners really want. So is, is, is the raw data now available if someone wants to research on this? Oh, it's a long time ago. I can try to get it to you. I did this work with Mark Hickman, by the way. So let's look at what, what, what we did here. Okay, so here's the similar thing. You notice that the helicopter is moving around, okay? And you can't stop the helicopter moving. It's, it's a wind, okay? So we are gonna look at this a little. You're gonna get a headache looking at it because it's moving, okay? But look at what happens now. No, it's still the same one. Let me. I hope it's, it's the right one, uh, targeted the right one. Okay, it's the same video. It's the same video, I haven't done anything to the video. All I did was I registered the images. Do you see what I've done here? It's no longer the jittery. And you notice also it went, it went, you know, because the helicopter was moving. So because we couldn't get the same image all the time, we only got, but now we can get that image and track cars. Okay. So here I was being really happy that finally I found out how to track cars and everything, but I changed my mind, all of that because of one simple reason, which I'll So now vehicle, you know, now what I want to know is, is now I want to, I have the, all the GPS, these are called DEM, DEM files, and GPS, they got all that information from the helicopter. I know exactly where the, where the mountains are, or the, where the uh, inclines are. So I can use that to georeference, I can probably decide where exactly the vehicle is just looking up from the sky, okay? 
And then we can track cars. So here's, here's tracking cars. These videos didn't work before, thanks to how you're traffic. So you notice I was able to track cars. I'm tracking this car, okay? So once I can track cars, that means I can get all the diagrams. Okay. So, so of course, you know, I, I thought this was a nice breakthrough. Now I can do much more cyber physical uh, things, but I'm, I'm not done, done yet, okay? I need real-time processing because that took way too much time. So let's do, try to do real-time processing. Let's have a fixed camera. That's easy to do. It's done now. You can buy, buy things which do real-time processing. It's in the market. Okay. So uh, we are going to fix a platform. We are going to look at the images and that's computational time because we don't need too much computational time now. And it's really quite e easy to do, okay? We can do this in real time. They have done real time image processing. Right now you can buy traffic uh, sensors to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna skip a little of that to tell you what we do, how we, how we count this, but I'll show you some pictures. Here the background image is fixed because you keep fixing the camera. You know exactly what the lanes are. You, what you do is you take the background image, you subtract it from them, and then you know where each car is. And once you know where each car is, you can track the car very fast. You don't have to do all this other registering of images and all that. So I have some, some uh, in order to track the cars, I use something called maximum likelihood estimation, which uh, was a nice matching problem. And uh, yes. So each of these little things, we did publish a paper or something. So that's why I got all these so many papers there. That not major, major papers. Okay, here's an image of an intersection. There are some cars here, you can't see this. And when you do the background imaging, you know where the cars are. So you take this, this one image, you know where the car, and this is done almost instantaneously, okay? And then you look, look at another image, frame two, and see where the cars are. And then what you can do is you take one car and second car. So here are the cars. There are three cars. There's a red car, there's a green car, and there's a purple car. And you can do some maximum likelihood matching, saying it's more likely that this car is matched to, matched to this and so on. This green car is matched to this. So you can do this maximum likelihood batching and track the cars. You can do it in real time, okay? So you can, now we have done this, speed of vehicle, turning ratios, and all that can be done in real time, okay? Moving camera. So this is where I gave up. The moving camera, the image processing automation took too much time, okay? Because we had to register the images. And for each minute of doing this, took us, you know, one hour, half an hour. No way we can apply it in the field. We can do it only offline. Okay, so I just want to show you this is where we stopped here on this project because, and here's an illustration. You know, we, we take a picture of frame one while we are flying. We take a, another frame two while we are flying and we do the maximum likelihood matching, okay? We can do something in real time, but not much, okay? We can compute density of cars, we can get the speed of cars, but we cannot really track the cars. We couldn't do that. So the technology capabilities at this time when I stopped doing this was we know it can be done, we can't do it, okay? Our group couldn't do it. You know, other groups have done it, but no one has still been able to do real-time tracking of cars. Military has been able to do it, okay? Why the military been able to do it? Because they've got gigantic computers on the planes and helicopters. We, traffic engineering and traffic companies cannot do that, okay? 
So we had this challenge, and I'm going to talk about in my third thing, how do we overcome this challenge? Okay. So Midas does remote sensing not from the sky. It does remote sensing from your smartphones. Now the penetration of smartphones in, in cars right now is close to 90%. So people are in the cars with smartphone driving the car. So I'm going to use your phone to track you. Okay, now you're going to say, someone's going to say, see, <laughs> see, we'll talk about that issue. Okay, I think this is it, and that's good timing. Yeah. You can, I can ask questions for five minutes. And don't ask me about privacy issue, please. We'll talk about it afterwards. Yeah. 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 How much they really follow the rules and yeah. Uh, of the that we enable you to have yeah. So, so I think you have pointed to two, two questions. One is that each driver has some uh, human factors, no, and I we can. The human, the human factor is crucial. Yeah. Remember also we have another objective that we don't want to make it too expensive. No, I mean, it's, sort of, it's uh, obviously a very cheap solution. Okay. Although you cannot follow it, yes, you are right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, we have time for a couple of more questions. So, are there any questions around? Uh, yeah. Okay, so, so yeah, uh, so that's another interesting argument. So I've written lots of papers on stochastic processes, okay, but, but I'm not using, because I'm doing real-time, uh, you know, I'm re looking at real-time detection. I do not want to uh, make an approximation here. So I'm, with the real-time data-driven, I'm, I'm working with the data to do the optimization. If there's an event, I will find it in the data. So I'm not using any analytical methods to try to figure out what it is. And you'll see my predictions, very simple predictions that I do. Every second, every second, every one tenth of a second, actually. So. How long do you do we don't know. It's always running. Okay. It's running. Yeah. Each car is giving information every second. Every in this case, every second. But now we are doing one every tenth of a second. It's giving information. Where I am? Here I am. Here I am. What's the relation with the offline simulation? To uh, to evaluate. Offline simulation was only for evaluation. That's all. So not it's not used for for prediction. No. The, but pr there is a simulation used for prediction. Very simple simulation because you want to do it quickly. And I will talk about that too, okay, in, in MIDAS. There was a question there. When you are talking about real-time system or real-time application, I assume you have some deadline. What are your deadlines here? Are they soft deadline, hard deadline? Okay. Deadline? okay. In roads, I'll talk about roads and you can talk about MIDAS later. So in roads, you have already scheduled, you have done your dynamic programming, you have scheduled that for this phase I'm going to give 15 seconds, for this phase I'm going to give 10 seconds, for this phase, I'm going to get 30 seconds, okay? So here comes your data. So I want to, my deadline is, in fact, I have a diagram which is not in this one, where it shows deadlines, okay? So the server asks you, I want the information, do I change my phasing? I'll give you one second to answer that question. So I have to solve my DP within one second. 
Initially, I couldn't solve that within one second, okay? But guess what, the processes became much, I could get a CPU, I could put on the road itself, that did, did it in half a second. So the deadline is one second, I solve it in half a second. And then download the decision threads, keep the same phasing, don't change it, or change it a little. Instead of 10 seconds, give it 11 seconds, because you know there is a, that car is not going as fast. Every second. At the network level, the decision was 40 seconds. Okay. But uh, when uh, you were talking about uh, internet for communication with data, internet is not a real-time communication system. Is that's why. There's a latency there. Okay, the question is, what's the latency? Can we handle the latency? So, in fact, what I, city of Tucson, where I did the testing, they said, okay, we couldn't handle the latency, so they put fiber optics. And all at once, I was able to do it. So okay. It's a dedicated network. Probably there's not too much. Uh, too no, much but yeah, we use internet on the fiber optics much faster. Okay. Before that, they were using. I know, but just probably there is not much other traffic on the same network. Like right. The right. Uh, you, ha you have two control loops: one inner loop and one outer loop. Actually, I have three. Oh, three. Yeah. Okay. The other one, you see three in the next one. Are these the network loops related to each other? Yes. Yes, they are related to each other. So the, there's a, there's a, uh, whatever is happening in lower level is given to the higher level. And I'll talk about that and so on. Okay, they're all given. It's usually information comes from the higher level, uh, demand information comes on the higher level, fidelity information goes from lower level. Okay, you know, you're right, you're okay. So there are two questions here and there, and I suggest the rest be taken offline during the coffee break. Is that okay? So okay. 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 Very good question. Guess what? I just submitted a proposal today in a National Science Foundation for self-driving cars. Traffic management for self-driving cars. It's a completely different issue. Oh, he talked about self-driving cars. Okay. No one has done this. How do you do traffic management on self-driving cars? I just submitted in U.S a proposal to a National Science Foundation <laughs> on that topic. <laughs> and I'll tell you, one, one year from now, I'll talk about that. So there was one question here. How do you configure the impact of environmental and rare scientists on your model? to other signals like location? Okay, the weather con uh, condition are considered implicitly, because what happens is you start finding the travel times you know, go down and everything, so they're implicitly, and they don't change very fast, slowly. Uh, events are, are a little problem, but because we are doing prediction all the time, if there's an event, so what the traffic engineer did for a test, he blocked a lane. If you put a regular traffic controller, it cannot do anything about it. He blocked the lane, our roads algorithm realized that we are not getting cars at the same speed rate. So it changed some things within our parameters so that we're able to respond to it. Still, we're not as good, but hopefully Midas is going to be better. So I suggest, uh, I'm sure there are more questions than you could take now. So I suggest we take a break of uh, half an hour, we reconvene at quarter to 11, and we take all the questions during the coffee break. Thank you very much. Let's thank okay. you.